was the day before Christmas and all through the hills The reindeer were playing and enjoying their skills While ever so often they stopped to call names At one little reindeer not allowed in their games Ha! Look at Rudolph, red as a bee Twice as big, twice as bright, his nose was so neat Hey you guys, what's up? Unrested here on my walk home after a 12 hour day of work and I thought I'd take a little bit of a time to record a walk and talk JFAC and give you a little bit of feedback on some of the questions people have been sending me about how does Japan change you, make you better, make you worse, increase your skills, decrease your skills, uh, help you meet your goals or change you as a person in general. Um, and that is a uh, pretty complex question. I don't think I'm going to be able to break it down very easily. So what I'm going to do is just kind of give you a basic and generalized spread of how the average expat is changed by living in Japan. Most reindeers' noses were brown and so tiny, but Rudolph's was big, red and shiny, and daylight it sparkled. The picture showed that at night time it glowed like the eyes of a cat. Although he was lonesome, he was always good, obeying his parents like a reindeer should. That's why on this day Rudolph felt playful. He brought Santa's presents and sleigh full of good little animals. All right, so let's get into it. What are the aspects that change about us when we get here? Well, I'd say the number one first thing that has to happen is you start to drop a bit of your shyness or if you're any bit introverted that starts to shed and it's mostly out of necessity now some of you may come here and you're already very outroverted you're very outgoing you're very talkative you can talk to any stranger you're probably gonna be okay already um, you're not even gonna have to worry about this change but for some of you you're gonna have to find that there's multiple times where you just won't know where to go what to do how to handle things, how to get something done in immigration, which is super important, with travel, with visa, with passports, etc. You're gonna have to ask somebody. You might have to ask them in Japanese before you even learn it, which means you're gonna go through some terrible translation troubles. Or maybe you're just gonna have to try and talk in some broken English and figure out what words people know and uh, make it through your shyness. Now, a lot of the times, I think what helps us out a lot is number one, Japan's polite. Um, Japanese people in general are extremely polite, extremely well-mannered. Um, they don't tend to lose their tempers or lose patience with you if you can't figure out what they're talking about or what they're trying to teach you. So that is a huge barrier that you can get over right away without worrying about that being a landmine obstacle that you would suddenly step on. Uh, at the same time, it will push you out of your shell. You will have to go after things that may be difficult for you um, in a foreign country that are not so difficult for you in your own home country. For example, getting a cell phone, opening a bank account, um, settling into a new apartment, and looking for things like even a laundromat close by. You're going to have to ask around town. You're going to have to talk to your neighbors. You're going to have to learn the locals and find the local places. And if you really, really want to get to know Japan, and get to know some of the greatest stuff there is, you need to explore and you need to ask around and you need to make Japanese friends. There are a few gaijin who come here and talk about how boring Japan was, how much they hated it and how nobody was nice to them. They probably just never overcame that first barrier of shyness and never learned much about what's in their area. I think Nagoya or Osaka or Tokyo uh, could be extremely boring if you never tried to learn anything that was in the area. You could even live in an area like Amemura, which is one of the most urban, dense, downtown areas here in Osaka, and if you didn't ask around, you wouldn't really find the clubs, the bars, and the places that you wanted to go to if you were living the single life here and trying to have a good time. So there's that. The next skill you're going to get to work on is your adaptation skills, and you're going to get to work on them in ways you never even imagined and probably would have never gotten to do in your own home country. For example, learning how to build a language in your mind. If you've never learned a language other than your home country's language, then this is going to be a brand new experience for you. Some of you coming from Europe already know multiple languages, but us Americans are surprised that people can fit two languages into one head. So for us, it's a really new and amazing experience and teaches us quite a lot about how languages are even built in our head when we're not just babbling as a small child and learning it as we grow up. It's a very different experience. On top of that, you're going to learn how to read people's body gestures a lot better. Before you can learn the language of Japanese, you start to learn cultural symbols of different ways people either breathe through their teeth, wring their hands in a certain way, and many other cues that you'll get culturally that will teach you a lot about people in Japan and that you will adapt to seeing all the time.
another great aspect, and I think this can be a life learning aspect, is learning to endure. You will learn the art of gambate and gamansuru, which pretty much means grin and bear it, try to get through it, push through it, and get through some uncomfortable situations. You will be in some uncomfortable social situations, and you might even be in some physically uncomfortable situations, for example, having to kneel an extremely long time at a table, something my American legs were not used to, and I couldn't finally do until I had been here at least two years. Now I can go to an izakaya, or I can go to a house that doesn't have any chairs, just the pillows, and Neo for hours on end, but I couldn't do that before. It took me a while to adapt, it took me a while to learn, and it took me a while to learn how to get on to do. Speaking about one of the biggest advantages of coming to Japan is the health properties. Now you're probably wondering, why Japan? Why would that be more healthy? I heard there's a lot of pollution there. Well, no matter what you've heard about the pollution, most of it's coming from China. So you're usually dealing with yellow sand from China um, in the air, but that's not really what I wanted to focus on. I want to focus on eating habits. Um, maybe for a lot of you Europeans, you've already got some pretty healthy eating habits, but for us Americans, when we come here, we lose a lot of weight. Um, we lose a lot of weight for multiple reasons. Number one, we have to be far more active than we ever were back in America. You're not going to drive many places unless you're living out in the country. You can walk just about everywhere, or you can bike there, both of which are physical activities. On top of that, there's more. You're going to be eating smaller portions because everything comes in smaller portions out here. And on top of that, you're going to be eating healthier. Most of the food is protein, fish base, or rice, vegetables thrown into just about everything. Much healthier habits and all your favorite snacks are not in Japan. And you will be surprised how much that helps temptation when it comes to losing weight. On top of that, if you take a job as a kindergarten teacher or an active English school teacher, you might find yourself dancing, singing songs, and being active outside on playgrounds with kids all day and get ready to lose even more then. I've seen friends come here and drop as much as 30 kilograms in just the first three months that they're here. It's pretty amazing. You can ask my friend Bjorn, who's from Sweden. He dropped a ton. I wish I had before and after pictures, actually. situations where I've found it a little bit hard to endure is crowded trains in Japan. You're not going to be the only person on there complaining. Everybody's uncomfortable, but no one actually complains verbally to the person next to him or the people around him. We're all stuck crammed on a train in very tight quarters together and complaining out loud would help absolutely nothing. These are just some of the small things that are going to change as you get to Japan, as you live here a while, and this will even happen if you're just here on a three month visa. This can happen if you stay for college and even more. I hope I've given you some ideas today that'll let you think about if Japan's right for you, if you feel like these are skills you want to learn, and if you feel like you can endure some of these situations. If so, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna rest it with the questions you requested. This is Walk and Talk JPEC. Have a good one. Boys, you get just as much and that is what pleased them as a happier reindeer who teased them. Fog in the world like a hood. He went to bed hopeful that he'd been good and up north on this same foggy night. Santa was packing his sleigh for a flight. This foggy call now will be hard to get through. He shook his round head and his belly shook too. Without any stars or a moon as a compass, this extra dark night is sure to swamp us. To avoid a smash up, we'll have to fly low. To see where we're going, we're gonna fly slow. We'll steer by the street lamps and houses tonight in order to finish before it gets light. Just think how the boys and the girls would be shaking if they didn't get this.
this food for the awakening. Come dasher and dancer, prancer and vixen. Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitz and Whip with your suppers get pitched in a hurry. Make sure that you won't find a worry when the Santa was white as he usually is. The fog was as white as a soda's white fizz. He tangled in the treetops again in the game. Barely missed getting hitting by a huge bleeding plane, but just not getting lost needed his skill. The street signs made it more difficult still. He made good speed with twisting and turning as long as street lamps were still burning. At each house first checking what people live there. But he'd pick out white presents to get there.